G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast with myself and Busher once again. I bring you the podcast thanks to our sponsors, Manscaped.com and they have an exciting announcement for you today. We have got their Ultra Premium Collection. Ultra Premium? Is that like Ultra Instinct from Dragon Ball Z? I have no idea what that means. Believe it or not though, this stuff is not actually for your private parts, it's for your not so private parts. I'm talking about a leveled up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. This is an all-in-one skin and hair care kit for the everyday man and covers you from head to toe, literally. Manscaped is trusted below the waist, now trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20. Now we all know how essential the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is for that precise trim below the waist. Their advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts to your most delicate areas. But now, you can enhance your perfect grooming routine with their ultra premium collection. This package includes the Manscaped Premium Deodorant and we need to clarify this is not for your balls. Please do not spray this directly onto I your that's a roll on actually. I knew that. This is the first time we've received it, alright? This deodorant dries clear, is aluminium free, and smells like their signature scent. Which isn't aluminium. <laughs> You'd hope not. <laughs> You've also got a hydrating body moisturizer. Have tattoos or issues with dry skin? It's designed to keep your skin feeling clean, smooth, and feeling fresh. And when you're feeling real dirty, they've got their nice old body wash here to lather you up with their infused aloe vera and sea salt sour gel. <laughs> sour gel, not sour gel. <laughs> sour gel. Although it is tangy. They also have a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner to clean your scalp with one easy step. Because shampoo, then conditioner, who can be bothered with that shit? And then they even have a free gift. A three-pack, not a two-pack, a three-pack of lip balm that will make your lips feel nice and wet with such ingredients such as vitamin E, peppermint, and eucalyptus oil. It doesn't say that in the script. <laughs> I ad-libbed that. That's four products, plus the free gift of lip balm in the Ultra Premium Collection. All of these products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, vegan-friendly, and dye-free. The best ingredients with zero compromise. Cruelty free, that's not normally a phrase that I associate with you, Busher. <laughs> We'd recommend using the products in this order. You go hop in the shower and scrub a dub, dub that body with the Manscaped body wash. Then lather your hair up with a two-in-one shampoo slash conditioner to keep your noggin toggin. Then dry off and spray on the hydrating body moisturizer to reinvigorate dry skin. Then roll on the Manscaped deodorant for obvious reasons. Then pop that Manscaped lip balm on. No one out here is kissing chapped up lips. <laughs> Did you just pucker up? Yeah. <laughs> Getting dressed is then optional. Wear one great scent all day long. Get that ultra premium collection hot off the shelves. And when you get that ultra premium collection hot off the shelves, you will get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. The power of attraction is now in a bottle thanks to Manscaped. Look at me, I'm a 10 now. Let's get into the podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to True Footy Podcast 87. Busher, welcome to your own place and Absolutely. your own podcast. How are you? I'm quite comfortable. Are you? It's quite good. That's good. You're repping the Manscaped. Yeah. We've got, uh, you would have just seen the Manscaped yeah. dad that we ran, so some new products yeah. there, which is, which is exciting. Absolutely. Uh, and it's great that they're still on board, considering how Ooh, yeah. slack we've been for the last three months. That's why I dusted the shirt off, because we got the new products. I was like, yeah, I'll bust the shirt out, because I was glad, I was... Knew we were still sponsored at this point, I guess. <laughs> yes, yeah. When the, when yeah. the products arrived, we thought, yes, yep. they probably yep. still they do still like us. us. Yeah, uh, but it's it's time for the season, Bush. Uh, yep. It is now. Well, we re- we're recording this on Saturday, so we're yep. four days away from the season because it starts on the Wednesday. It now. does. It does. Melbourne versus the Bulldogs. A bit better than bloody Carlton and Richmond with Richmond mm. pumping them every year. Yeah, even though this could be the year actually. It'll well, be now that it's not the first game of the year. It'll be the year Carlton wins. Yeah, true. That's what'll th- happen. Do you want to do a stream? For Wednesday? Thursday. Yeah, I should be around. I got Thursday off. So maybe we'll do a stream Thursday. Um, yep. Unfortunately, I'll miss. I'll actually miss the season opener. But care to offer a prediction? That's a grand final For the replay. season opener. Yeah. Is that the first time the season opener has been the, the grand finalist? I think it would be. Yeah. Cool. I think probably Bulldogs, I'm thinking, because yeah. there'd be a bit of championship fatigue. There usually is in these sort of big games. I've noticed in other sports where they have like the championship first game of the next season where the champions get steam blown up their ass. They're a bit distracted i thought the same thing <laughs> distracted i thought the same thing but 
this is Melbourne's time to showcase their flag in front of their home fans, which they couldn't do. Yeah. So I feel like this actually will be a red hot game. Yeah, the crowd's so. going to be red hot. I, I already know. I was having a bit of a yarn with a friend of the channel, Tim Diskin, yesterday. Actually, we were having oh, yeah. a bit of back and forth here yeah, because he replied awesome. to my Instagram story. Yeah, cool. I haven't yeah, chatted with him real. He was having a bit of a yarn. He was saying he's driving down for the game. He's really cool. keen and reckons all the Melbourne fans will be going hard. Mm. What did you make of the preseason, Busher? Do you think we can take much of what was? Uh, I'd say the first round of of Amy results, like the the real unofficial practice games. Yeah. They were uh, a bit more sporadic in terms of results, but I felt in this the second round uh, that those results mostly kind of went how you'd expect round one to go. Yeah, teams I mean? were more playing how they'd expect them to come into season, whereas the first, I think, they were still experimenting with some different looks and players. And I certainly hope that's the case as a West Coast fan because the showing yeah. we put up in round two of the of the Amy rather uh, was a bit more promising than a hundred point yeah. loss. I think they were sort of knew they were backs against the wall going into that one, though, so they sort of rallied. Yeah, yeah, I actually did think, um, not to get stuck into the Eagles too much, but, uh, yeah, I did think we actually had a point to prove in yeah. Amy, which is, uh, Amy 2, rather, which is uh, a disappointing position to be in in the first place. You don't want to have to prove a point in, yeah. in the preseason games, but, uh, yeah, thankfully it was a bit of a healthier showing. But um, other than that, anyone sort of stand out to you uh, preseason-wise? Individuals, nothing sort of too crazy. I saw Jerry for North Melbourne had a big game, so he could mm. get potentially interesting with the Goldstein dynamic, figure out how those two could play off each other. True, a player that nearly left the, 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 yeah. the Roos last year, the Saints, um, that seemed like it was going to happen, and then North sort of yeah. backed away thinking yeah. they, they could use him. they got Coleman Jones now as yep. well. They're, they're talking long term, they think he's a ruck, but. Coleman sh- Jones? Yeah, but short term, they're going to have to use him as a forward yeah, based on Jerry and. Goldstein. Mm. Now, a pretty promising player. He's only played nine games, but uh, I'd be interested. He's one to watch for me this huh? year, I think. Just uh, I don't think he's going to set the world on fire. He's only young. but yeah. um, he Rucks few, take time. A few good games for Richmond well, last year as well, which sort of... Oh, yeah, Coleman Jones, you mean? Yeah, I was, yeah. sorry. I was referring to Coleman yeah. Jones. Yeah, Cherry, I think, is... Is he yeah. the one you said that will be... Yeah, he's the one I sort of mentioned because he yeah. had a big pre-season performance in the Ruck where they'll probably rest in Goldstein a bit more. Horn Francis bobbed up as well for yeah. North. Um, who are da- Dacos 31 yeah. posies because I'm in a draft fantasy league and because I was picked 10 this year so mm. I was sort of up shit Craig a bit so I took a bit of a flyer a bit early even I probably should have I took Dacos and Horn Francis wow in, in draft yeah interesting and it's not even a dynasty league like that's pretty much the memes everyone was saying after we finished our draft I was like yeah he thought it was a dynasty league talking yeah. about me because I took like Luke Jackson Josh Sins yeah, all sorts wow. of young people did you really I, I've gambled hard on youth yeah wow yeah. not for the first time <laughs> um, we'll uh, yeah today we're going to rattle through our, our general season prediction so I've done I've done my ladder predictor uh, so people know generally I did mine and then I watched your video after I did mine I'm like these are pretty similar yeah, yeah. which means that we're going to be far off because it always yeah it always shuffles heaps um, when the season actually comes. Um, your perception in the preseason means very little. And yeah. it, as well, just getting back to like Amy and, and whether or not those games mean anything, it, it'd be funny to look back, I think, at previous preseason games of any given year and see how ridiculous the results yeah. were. And like 18, the first one that comes to mind. Like, cause yeah. I think we pumped you in a preseason derby and then yeah. those, you ended up winning the I think the you won at least, I don't know how many times we played. We might have played just twice, but we lost both, I'm pretty sure. Not der- like actual derbies, pre-seasons. Pre-season derbies, sorry. Because you still know. kept your actual derby straight going until the last yeah. one. But I think we you beat us uh, both years in 18, both games, pre-season yeah. games. And then I think... Uh, and then Wolsey and everyone was like, yeah, Eagles for the spoon. Yeah, no, so yeah. I, I like that though. I, I like <laughs> when everyone writes us off because historically that's when we actually do well. And when yeah. we... Uh, favourite to win we, we never never really go deep but um, well, yeah today we'll just get into the ladder I, I think we'll the best sensible way to do it is probably start from the bottom up yeah um, well when I did my one I sort of because the top few fell obvious and the bottom few fell obvious it's that middle where it's a bit of a shit show oh, so hard so yeah. hard I, I don't know if you'd agree I felt like the top eight race last year was incredibly weak in terms of you had the five teams and then Sydney and yeah. then in varying points we thought Sydney were probably part of that top six but um Ultimately, you know, yeah. didn't go deep in finals, but uh, I felt like they were clearly finals quality. And then the fact that my club and your club, with all due respect to Fremantle, the fact that we were in the finals eight race shows the how weak round, yeah. in the last round. Sorry, yeah, like we had to beat Brisbane and yeah. then hope for another result. But the way we were playing anyway was horrible. So to some extent, you could yeah argue then that seventh to thirteenth gap. Which yeah. I think we'll allude to today. That could play out any combination of those teams. Yeah, yeah, it certainly feels that way. It's the Wild point. West. 
which uh, I mean, we say that with confidence now, but the bottom four is probably not going to be right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. But we'll, we'll let's start off with the bottom four. Um, do you want to give us your bottom four? Alrighty, I'll whip that out. And number eighteen, I've tragically, I hate to do it to him, but I've put Gold Coast at eighteen. Yeah, let's uh, uh, give us the four, and then we'll talk about each. Team. And then I've gone Adelaide at seventeen. I've gone Collingwood 16, then North Melbourne at 15. Okay, so we have the same bottom four. Yep. The only difference is I've got North at the top of the bottom four, Adelaide third last, uh, Gold Coast second last, and then Collingwood taking out my spoon. Should we talk about yeah. the Gold Coast first? Because you have yeah. them in the spoon. Why do you have them as a winner? I just first? sort of feel like those other teams in that group have more upside and top-end talent to elevate them, whereas Gold Coast still is in a bit of status. And Mac Andrew, their top prospect this year, isn't someone like a Noah Anderson or a Matt Rowe who's going to come in and immediately make an impact like their last few draftees. Mm. He's someone that's going to take a bit more time, and when he comes on, he's probably going to be special, but it's going to take time. Yeah, I see what you mean. No immediate impact. And then Hugh Greenwood yeah. was another player that exactly. was important last year that, that left. And another even more important player, in my opinion, was Ben King, yep. who is now out for the year for, uh, with that ACL. So I'm glad he extended with them. That was a quicker side band. Yeah. That was good. Might so, be the yep. the standard two year before the the f- yeah. not free agency move, the, but the yeah. Adam Chera special. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, it is a plus for them, and um, yep. and at least in the short term, keeping King for another couple of years might help them retain other players yep. for the next two years because. Uh, Luke Hoshis and Rankin are getting circled around at the moment, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. So we won't talk too much about the list management yep. side of things, but let's in terms of on field, I think they flagged Luke Hoshis to play forward. Yep, I think he's only kicked like nine goals or something at AFL level I'm not sure yeah he's played back and wing and stuff yeah. his whole career so far so drafted as a key forward talent like a really really highly yeah. rated elite key forward um, and then being it's kind of a product of being lightly built but also the fact that he's a good footballer at ground level and in the back half and as a runner as well that's meant that he's played in the back half and done exceptionally well but uh, it'd be interesting to see how he adapts because he's going to need to kick a lot of goals if Gold Coast is going to lift themselves out of the bottom four. Yeah, because he, like, he's a real good field kick and around the ground sort of guy. It'd be mm. interesting to see how he goes playing as a more traditional forward rather than a hit-up target around the ground. Yeah. Um, uh, in looking at their midfield, Took Miller like, was All-Australian on the bench yep. last year. Uh, t- terrific breakout season. So to support him, they're going to need someone else to do it. I am... Obviously, you got Rao coming back. Yeah. I'm reasonably bullish on Rao, but... I yeah, think Noah Anderson as well as another player yeah. that could actually elevate himself again. I think he had a yeah. really good year last year, a little bit understated, because people were probably ignoring Gold Coast for yeah. a little while in that patch of the season. Uh, but I think he could actually prove to be a pretty pivotal player for them this year. For me, I think... I don't think they're the worst list in the comp. Like, I, their preseason form was good. So they beat the power in that first one. Um, yeah. Whether or not we can read into that, probably not. Uh, but then to back it up and beat the Cats as well um, with a relatively strong team in. Like, they peaked a lot right. of their stars, the Cats. But again, it doesn't mean everything because, um, you know... The, the, the Those team, guys probably just have kilometre targets and shit they've been told That's to right, hit. and they're doing strategically. They're not really... Uh, on the ball, so to speak, in, the, in those games. But uh, in terms of the way they move the ball, I thought they looked pretty good. And there's a lot of young talent there that, in theory, should improve. It's just the, the lack of goals and then their history of not lasting a whole season is why I had Gold Coast. I, I had them second last. Yeah, so. for me, it's more faith in the other teams rather than distrust in what they're doing because they are going about it the right way. They, yeah. are building a, they are building something. It's not unfair to have distrust in in the Gold Coast, though, Mm. because of, you know, historically they don't last whole seasons. I I could see them finishing a lot higher than second last, but it'll depend on how their first month or so goes. Like, I think they could win in Perth in round one against us, definitely. But uh, it's after that round eight period where they, like... They have a wide range, let's put it that way. They have, like, an 18 to probably 10 range. yeah. Yep, that's it. So, um, what about Collingwood? Where did you have them? I had third them, last or? I believe it was third last. Yeah, I had them right. above Adelaide, yeah. I had them as my spoon, but talk us through Collingwood. Well, I still think like they've still got some good top-end talent, especially now that Jordan Dugowie's not facing any sort of consequences and ready to go round one. Jack Crisp, someone who's emerged as a good midfielder. Nick Dykos looks really good, or immediately looks like one of their best players. Taylor Adams is still there. Brody Grundy's still there. Mm. Darcy Moore, I think, has had a more healthy preseason compared to last. I don't feel too confident saying that, but I think Darcy Moore is healthy and good to go for him. Mm. So I don't think their situation is as dire as it... They again, last year we thought they'd probably still make finals and they mm. completely fell off. So I think if you look at the list... 
uh, movement over the last couple of years, obviously, has been a huge transition towards youth. Yeah. Um, drafting heavy. Uh, and they've got the number one draft. Uh, no, sorry, not number one draft. I think of him as a number one draft yeah. pick, but he actually went pick four in the end. Um, Nick Dacos and possibly the rising star favourite. I haven't looked at the odds, but... Um, I'd probably have him slightly over Horn Francis just on the pre-season form. Just yeah, uh, yeah. Well, um, But there's plenty of time for both and any other contenders. Yeah, but long story short, just a lot of games to the, the kids. I, I think their kids have been pretty good. Oliver Henry, um, yep. Finn McRae, Finley McRae, Trent Bianco, uh, Dacos, as we said, and then... Even um, Josh Dacos, they sound optimistic about yeah. it. They've got him healthy, playing on a wing now, where he's, he's preferred role. League... Led the league in nine, sorry, led the league in debutants last year with nine, yep. and I think it will just be a similar year of um, you know a new coach as well. Yeah. Like he's going to want to get this right. So my logic was, Collingwood will have low expectations and want to play the youth. the uh, The argument against them winning the spoon is because they are generally a pretty competitive team and, and a, a strong team and brand that that don't stay down too long. So, and I think having a more regular season in terms of home and away games will help them because they're a Melbourne-based team. They're one of the bigger Melbourne-based teams, so they'll have a good crowd advantage most weeks now that crowds are back on and yep. it's a relatively normal year, knock on wood. Yeah, that's right. So well and truly entrenched in rebuild mode. Uh, I don't think they'll rebuild for long. It's not like yeah. uh, looking at some other teams down there and you think, oh, they need a good few drafts. Like I think they've... Because the thing is, with most of those names I mentioned as well, like your Dugowies, your Crisps and stuff, they're in that mid-20s range. So they've it's still true. got that thing, even though they've got the older side bottoms and mm. Pendle-type dudes. Yeah. They are, they are top-heavy, I would say. Yeah. There's a, there's a, they're top-heavy and then, uh, the, and then the talented question. youth. So I think they're in a good spot long-term. Yep. Obviously, it's been a few years of turmoil for them, so I just don't see it translating this year. And, uh, yeah, I had Collingwood yeah. as my spoon. Who else we had? We had Adelaide, Adelaide. in there. Yep. So I had them third last. I think you did as yeah, well. Yeah, had them second last, but, yep. yeah. What, uh, how do you rate their chances of finishing high? Because I think there's a bit of optimism around. They have the rank, like, similar to like that. what I said with Gold Coast, even Collingwood as well. Like, all these teams sort of have that range where they could finish like in that 10, just mm. missing finals, maybe even scraping in if everything goes absolutely right for them sort of thing. Yeah. So it is pretty even, but there's still a lot of questions around Adelaide. Mm. The one I sort of mentioned last time, and it's still a big thing for me, is the lack of A-grade talent mm. at Adelaide for me. Like, none of those big, Strong heavy hitters that can really elevate the team. Yeah, you know, like a like a Rowell and Anderson, yeah. the coaches that we just rattled off for the Gold Coast. Um, I think I agree. There's just a lot of good, decent talents yeah. at Adelaide. Um, a lot of B, B plus type of dudes. I guess the other exception is probably Phil Thorpe. I think there's a lot of or Phil Thorpe. There's a lot yep. of optimism about what he could become, but at being a second year key position player. It's unlikely he's, he's, gonna, he's not going to raise them up the ladder too much. And hmm. let's also not underrate how important Taylor Walker was to them winning yep. some games last year. The the thing Adelaide's like we just said as an argument against that the, they their form at times belied their list ranking. Do you know what I mean? Like the right. way they beat Geelong, the way they beat Melbourne last year, and the way they moved the ball, admittedly with the help of Taylor Walker, meant that you sort of had faith that they could beat just about anyone on their day. Yeah. And that might be an argument for them rising up the ladder a little bit, despite us not seeing like being right. convinced where it's going to come from. Ben Keys is. A very good midfielder, actually. I think yeah. he's an understated player who's come out of nowhere after being cut he's from the line. Little on that Tom Mitchell type category, though, as an accumulator of sure. impact. Sure, but he's a very pleasant surprise yeah. for them, I would say. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of optimism I, around Adelaide, and I agree with it. I just don't know if this is the year, of considering how young they are. So, I think bottom four again, yeah. but again, like the, the, the way they can, the, yeah, the way they can beat teams despite. Um, maybe their list ranking not being that high. Um, it makes me a little bit nervous about this prediction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about North then. Yeah. I, so I kind of see a bit of upside in them. Like, they've got a lot of talented kids. Like, Horn Francis seems ready to go. Yeah. They've got Simkin, LDU, Taron Thomas. Yeah. So those are the guys in that, like, 21 to 24 range. Yeah. I think they're all drafted similar time. Um, all high picks, all high picks, and all very high potential. LDU's yep. probably got to start delivering. Yeah, I think he's. I, I like him. Yeah, and I, I think the upside's there. But um, you've got th- to get the runs on the board. Yeah, I think Simkin and LDU. Sorry, Simkin and Thomas are probably further along in that yeah. development. Um, so it's probably time for him to to get stuck into to a pretty productive year. Um, who else have they got? They had Larky. Yeah, he had a year. good back end last year. He Zohar. sort of showed something. Zohar. So I've liked his game. 
Adding Greenwood probably adds yeah. a bit of um, grunt to their midfield as yeah, well. Yeah, a bit of tackling pressure, a bit of that like Libba type of enforcer type in the mid almost. Which will help them short term yeah. as well. There's uh, even someone else in their forward line I can't think of. Uh, I said Zerha. There's some oh, Common Jones. Yeah. Oh, Jaden Stevenson was a great Yeah, Jaden Stevenson was a name I was trying to think of. But there's another key, I think, that's in contention over there as well. It'll probably come to me as soon as yeah. this podcast ends. I can't really yeah. picture it right now. Their back line's still pretty good. Like, they've got pieces. Yeah, so they lost Robbie Tarrant, some, yeah. some experience there. but um, That'll hurt them. That yeah. will definitely hurt them. Ben Mackay uh, is yep. probably... Yeah, probably their number one key back right now, yeah. unless I'm missing someone obvious in my brain. Sometimes it's hard with this yeah. podcast, but um, yeah, I, I I think again, still a bit too young. Yeah, but I do really rate. I, I love Jaden Stevenson as a player. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a great, Electric. great sort of like fifth midfielder where he can float forward and kick goals yeah. as well. Um, you send him in to be a bit of a point of difference, but he can just float around in the forward line, be a menace. So yeah, I mean you got a fab forward there of um, LDU Simkin. Stevenson, Thomas, yeah. and probably someone else I'm forgetting. Horn Francis. Yeah, Horn Francis. And then, <laughs> and then some other like understated. Ben um, Cunnington's still floating around. Yeah, I was thinking Tom Powell and yeah. Will Phillips. Yep, those so, two are very high picks as well. So a couple of years ago, I remember saying with North, I need to see who the kids are. I don't, I don't yeah. see them yet. And now I feel like they've just about got their yeah. whole team together. It's just a case of... Filling it out. Yeah, developing it. Yeah. So that's where I think they're at. And... Um, yeah, well, I still have them moving up four spots. So, yeah, yeah fair, fair play to them. Cool. Should we move on to the glut of teams? To the crapshoot. Yeah, this is... Let's talk. Let's try and lock in six teams that will miss finals. <sighs> this is hard because I think we're going to feel differently about this. Uh, yeah, because I've sort of got my tears yeah, in take, front of me. Take us through your next six. I've got seven in this group, actually. Okay. Because I did a top tier where I only had two teams the top four tier where I had another four and then my top eight tier was four teams I thought that could make the eight yep. there's seven teams in that group okay. I've got Essendon Saints Carlton GWS West Coast Frio and Sydney gee I want to name all of the on the all I want to name like most of those in the finals exactly it's wow it's crazy eh yeah wow that that's hard to separate what did you mention Hawthorne Hawthorne was in my Plebs group. They had I had them grouped with North Melbourne, Collingwood. Okay. Adelaide, in that in case, Gold let's Coast. touch on Hawthorne before we yeah. move on to the rest. What do you think of Hawthorne? I think they're probably just a little above those. They're probably the top of the plebs group for me, but they're still <laughs> in that category rather than challenging for finals because I think they're still a bit young. Top of the pleb group's not going to be received Best well. of the worst. <laughs> Best of the worst, we'll, we'll sure. say. Sure. But yeah, I think they've got the upside as well. They've got the structures and stuff, but Sam Mitchell's going to make some tweaks. They've still mm. got a lot of young guys that are going to have to show stuff. Sounds like Gibkiss is a round one walk in. Richmond? Oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, Wait, who's the. Josh Ward. Oh, yeah, Ward, but Ward's, yeah, a bit more yeah. ready to go than Gibkiss. I got those two mixed up, my bad. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see Mitchell's approach uh, in terms of play the kids versus let's just try and win as much as we can. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. He's such a competitive type. Um, and they, they have been drafting yeah. over the last few years and drafted in some good talent. Um, Granger Barras, yep. Will Day, um, and then Josh Ward, like you yep. alluded to. Um, Evan Warpool's still pretty young. Yes, Connor Downey. Oh, we have Warpool. Yeah, that's the one yep. we forget. Like he's part of their next generation yeah. and this one as well. Um, yeah. And I, th- I think, I think their midfield on paper is strong, uh, but other than Tom Mitchell, it hasn't really been consistent. Yeah. Like it's Mitchell, Amira, um, yeah. Warpool, and um, maybe Wingard's the next one. Yeah. Shields is in there as well. Yep. Uh, but. Mitchell, I thought, really stepped up again last year, yeah. and I think he probably just needs a bit more support. Um, yeah. I think O'Meara is because he does the dirty more. work. He needs the silk to be the silk, while he's the accumulator. It doesn't necessarily directly impact the game, but he gets the possession for the guys that do. Yeah, I think I think O'Meara is capable of being a very good uh, player, but probably just needs to. So he's been healthy a while now. Like he'll be able to like a bit mm. like an Ollie Wines. Like took Ollie Wines a few years of sort of. That's true tumbling Same before age. he had emerged with his Brownlow year last year yeah that's what I mean I, th- I yeah. feel like we because he we had that rough trial with health as well haven't seen his top potential yeah. yet but um, is what I meant to say but Warple yeah. another one with their upside I, I really like what they've got in the back half yeah um, Blake Hardwick's a good dependable player yeah, yeah for, I don't think I even mentioned him in my video but I was yeah. thinking of guys like GF um, Will yep. Day I'm a big fan of I think he's a very good player Scrimshaw pretty understated yep. I like Scrimshaw he was a good fantasy for me last year gross Sicily <laughs> comes back into the side yep that's um, pivotal so they've almost got too much run <laughs> it's like Carlton when they recruited uh, Sard and Williams although yeah. ultimately that didn't go quite the way they planned Forwards, um, 
Gunson and Bruce. They probably just yeah. need a couple of young guys. Young guys. They got some young keys in Kaczynski and and Mitchell Lewis and Mitchell Lewis. So they probably just want a, another yeah. one, I'd say. Um, but a overall, more top because those guys were sort of like not A tier like K Ford prospects. I was sort of more raw like grunt guys yeah. that have grown into it rather than like a Logan McDonald, for example. Like yeah, those, that's it. That's a Till Forper like top tier like. I think if they had the opportunity to draft guy. like a really good prospect in the first round, key forward, they yeah, would they take would. it. Yeah. But um, I know that they're very bullish on Kaczynski in particular, yeah. I think. Uh, and fit rightfully so, he's kicked bags at AFL yeah. level already. Yeah, so. performed Till Thorpe in that duel for the Rising Star nomination that round. Finished the world, uh, year well last year. I think they can play finals. They, I'm, I'm including them in my finals group. I'll, I'll be yeah. at the bottom of it. Yeah, I just sort of probably don't quite see them making finals. They drew with Melbourne last year. They beat the Dogs at the end of the last year. Their last six yeah. weeks or so was pretty strong. But Adelaide, the year before, had a good last six weeks. That's sort the of thing. I sort of yeah, fair tough enough. me to fully bank on them doing it. Fair enough. I, I, I think they're a little bit better, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yep. I just have them a little bit above those teams I had in that next group. That's cool. All righty. Um, should we segue into our own teams, into this group? Oh, yeah. Because um, I sort of had them at... On my predicted ladder, they were at either end of the scale. Okay, let's talk about I had Freo at 8, West Coast 13. Let's talk about West yep. Coast then because I'm fairly similar. So what do, yeah. you, what do you think of the Eagles? There's a lot of questions. It's like one of those things where if everything goes right, there is still that upside in that team, but there's a lot more questions and a lot more things that they need to go right now. Like we were saying the other day, I, pr- I made a bit of an off-taste joke about how unlucky West Coast have been lately, oh. but... You have been bloody unlucky. Like, literally pick up Tom Joyce and then two days later, he's bloody injured. So we had four players within two days, I think it was four, do their ankles. Uh, so Tom Cole, uh, and then three days, uh, two days later, we had Chesser, uh, Chesser Sheed, and Yo all do their ankles. So we uh, signed Tom Joyce uh, <laughs> to, to support the list. Two days after getting signed, he's busted his ankle and it's suspected syndesmosis. So Where do all these injuries happen? At your training ground or... Optus or a combo. Well, three of them were at Lath Lane. Yeah, I'd, I'd say all were at Lath Lane. Actually, it's probably a fair guess. I don't know. I'm surprised there hasn't been more comments about like the surface and shit. Like we copped when we moved to Coburn and that yeah. sort of stuff. I think Simpson said it actually wasn't too bad the ground. Yeah. I think I think it's just bad luck. It's one of those ones everyone just pounces on that argument. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's not really a focus at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, it has been a summer of hell in yeah. terms of that. Jack Darling as well, yeah. even though that situation's cleared in the yeah, last Yeah, it's just turned hours. out to be like a pointless like yeah. circus, that, that whole thing. I so. assume it was the Novavax thing. Maybe, I'm assuming that, but... Don't know. Yeah, I guess he wanted to, his own privacy respected because he evidently yeah. got a jab like three weeks ago because he must yeah. be fully vaccinated now. Yeah. Anyway, we won't delve too much into that. With dialing back in, does that make you a little bit more optimistic for West Coast? It does system? add a bit more bullishness about them, like mm. especially with Oscar Allen out being out early. Mm. Like I would have felt like Oscar Allen could probably fill that role reasonably well, but the fact he was out as well just sort of left you relying on 55-year-old Josh Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best way to sum up my feelings are this. It's not so much injuries that really concern me, it's system. I think back to 2018 where we had... Not the same, maybe, injuries. It's certainly not all in a preseason, but we actually had a dire injury run that last year. And everyone who we cycled into that team, like your Hutchings and your Brendan Archies and um, Nathan Vardy's, came into the side and we played just Did as well. Job. And yeah. we, we were beating good teams away from home. Um, so my belief is... Also, to add to that, last year when our last stars came back, the system was so poor and the way we were playing, yeah. arguably due to fitness as well, was so horrid that we... Somehow we're getting worse. Yeah, there's been criticism of the game plan like the last couple of years. So that's where I think there's been a lot of talk that we've tweaked it. Uh, and that uh, I remember reading a comment that it's really put Tim Kelly in a much more favourable sort of position in our game plan. And he's yeah. going to have a really good year. And he played just about as well as I've ever seen him play against Fremantle. So if we have rectified that, then I think we, we should play finals because I believe our best 22 is finals quality. But I'm a little bit too scarred from last year in terms of how pathetic some of the performances are that I am Yeah, the best and confidence. worst is an issue. But I, th- I do think we can play finals for that reason. Yeah. Um, and it's not, not so much injuries. It's uh, can we adapt our game style in a way that's yeah. good. We have an easy first month. Um, but yeah, anyway, regardless, without banging on too much, I think... Um, I think there's optimism there, but um, but I can't back us. Yeah, <laughs> I can't back us. Uh, let's talk about someone like St Kilda. We, you mentioned them. Um, yeah, I saw that range. I had them in the 
Yeah, I had them at 11th, so they were sort of in that. I had them just above West Coast and Essendon. Yep. Okay. But I still see a few question marks with them. Um, more more question, question marks, marks compared to the teams I sort of had above them, like. Yeah. Brad Hill is a back now. That sort of it seems promising, but a full season of it. Who's going to really perform in their midfield, especially? We got Jack Steele. Though. Yeah, Jack Steele is obviously the list. Yeah, but other than that, I don't know about their like supporting mids as much, especially with Zach Jones having some time off. I believe. Oh yeah, I forgot about that actually. Yeah. That's true. Um, th- some upside would be someone like a Hunter Clark. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think he's very internally rated. Certainly, uh, I've always been a fan. Um, yeah. Caulfield's just, a big out for them, I feel Yeah, I agree with that Because I remember that draft, you were a big Hunter Clark man I was a big Caulfield man Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough um, I think they underachieved last year So for me, it's kind of, I'm waiting for it to snap back into gear Yeah Because I believe their their quality um, Like, I think the, West Coast has a better list but than St Kilda Yeah but, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you did list rankings, I'd probably have the very different to what the latter will actually yeah. be. Uh, and I, I don't know. I think St Kilda are pretty well, well-rounded well and and should finish higher. I think they had injury issues last year and fitness, similar to West Coast. Um, but because they can be so up and down, it's hard to back them. So I yeah. think it's easy for us to, to sort of forget about them a little bit. And we're probably, we may or may not be proven right about that. Um, but I, I think, again, this is a team that um, you know, won a final in 2020. Played some good football, and at times last year looked pretty good as well. They beat uh, they beat GWS in round one. They beat uh, Richmond by forty points. Held them to their lowest score in sixty years. They beat Brisbane at the Gabba. I want to say as well. It was in yeah, Queensland. They've had some Mo- good wins, yeah. So when when a team's doing that, it shows to me that there's there's quality underneath. It's just a case of ironing out all the kinks and getting on a path that that is consistent. Depth's the other one for me. Like some of their like top like. 10, 12 players are pretty good. A lot of mm. B grade, low, A minus E type guys. But that last 8 to 10, 12 guys they're playing each week, a few too many question marks for me. Fair enough, yeah. I guess it will, um, it, time will tell on that yeah. one. But I, I think, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish fifth, to be honest. I believe it. I could see them sneaking in, obviously. Like I've got them in that top 8 potential group. But yeah. I sort of have them in that 7 8 more so. So, yeah, to sum up on the Saints, I just think. I, I believe in them, but because of their inconsistency, very much similar to West Coast, I can't back them ahead of the other finals mm. aspirants. Like, it's hard to back them against over Essendon. Yeah. Speaking of which, should we talk about the, the Dons? Yeah, Essendon works nicely for me. They were in the middle of the St Kilda West Coast sandwich on my predicted list at 12. Yeah, I feel like they're a little bit of a different story. They're a younger side on the up, yep. whereas I think West Coast and St Kilda are obviously a bit more mature, had their time mixing it with the, the better teams in finals and stuff yeah. like that, and then a falling out, whereas Essendon seems to be on a bit more of a linear improvement. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I would, but I think this is the year for a bit of stagnation before they can build on it again. So I think they'll be as good as they were last year, but other teams will improve to overtake them mm-hmm. rather than them dropping off. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I like what they're doing. I like their yeah. list. It's well-rounded in the most sense. It's probably a good key forward is probably what they're missing, but then P- yeah. Peter Wright... Has shown yeah. he may not be the number one key long term, but he can yeah. kick bags. That's Even sure. Harrison Jones, I like him. D- uh, yes, Harrison. Jo- I think he's just done a major injury. Has he? Yeah. Shit. So that's that's a blow. I think yeah. I saw that t- earlier today. So um, I'll get on the Google machine. Yeah, uh, Stringer was obviously a big goal kicker. Um, yep. Also, a big impact in the midfield. Yeah. So he's he's been great. So uh, I mean, I guess when we're looking at Essendon, their improvement last year came off the back of guys like Parrish. Um, off Peter Wright coming into the side and, and doing a good job. Not just those guys. Obviously, you have McGrath and uh, Merritt and all these other guys, but um, Stringer sort of blew up last year as well. So what's yeah. the thing that's going to make them even better this year? You'd be looking at their youth, and yeah. I think their youth is still needs a bit more time, yeah. to be honest. Because like, the thing that elevated them last year was the emergence of Darcy Parrish to like a decent extent. I don't see someone on their list doing a Darcy Parrish-type leap this mm. year. There's guys that have the potential to take that leap, but... Mm. I think next year is probably more the year where we'll see them, after the stagnation, pick back up again. I guess McGrath is probably McGrath is the what people actually, will yeah. say. I think that's, that's a good, a good counter. Yeah. Um, but uh, someone like Merritt is already a gun. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, Merritt's sort of... I wouldn't say he's reached his ceiling necessarily, but he's very close to his ceiling. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You'd be surprised if he's the one driving massive improvement next year. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've drafted heavy as well. Like Perkins, is, yep, he's he a, can bob up. But again, second years. Yeah, second um, year blues. I just don't. It's not even saying he's going to have a, like a bad year. Obviously, I'm not yeah. saying that, but it's just a case of. Well, I mean, he'd need to 
become a bit like Dugowie yeah. <laughs> so to really lift them up the ladder individually. So uh, Nick Cox was fantastic, yep. but again, still bit slide so as well young. and raw. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zach Reed is a longer term key back that they've they've drafted. Yeah, I think his health's a bit questionable as well at the moment. Yeah. Uh, they've drafted Ben Hopp. He's going to yep. need some time. Although, physically... He's pretty ready. An unreal specimen yeah. for an 18-year-old. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think he'll probably be close to round one for him. It's rare that I look at an 18-year-old kid and make, it makes me feel bad about myself. <laughs> oh, my God. He's a, he's a machine. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got him in my fantasy bench as well. But, um, yeah, with the Dons, I kind of waiting against them a little bit because I think to finish eighth last year wasn't a massive achievement uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean like if we're back Steve and Brad beat their way in a little bit well I think they, they I think they deserve to be yeah. there like they obviously were, they deserve they it. were comfortably better than West Coast and they, they beat yeah. Fremantle they were better than them they, they smashed the Kilda so I'm not trying to yeah. um, knock what they what they achieved but I think the gap between um, 8th and, and even a Sydney and, and a Port who finished 5th and 6th I think it was yeah. quite significant so if we're making the argument that that glut of teams in the middle is going to be very competitive, then that makes it maybe a little bit tougher for Essendon. For yeah. So it be interesting to see. But it'll be another year within the same coach again when sometimes that you get upside from that, an extra year of adapting yeah, to that continuity new style. and stuff, yeah. So um, they're a finals chance, but yeah. I, I agree, I have them missing. Yeah. Um, who else we got there? The uh, uh, Spruik. On mine, after St Kilda, I've got Carlton at 10th. Let's talk about Carlton, because every preseason there seems to be a narrative about that they're going to improve, but this is the first time I think I'm going to buy in a little bit. Yeah. Do you agree with that? It's the most I've sort of bought in. I think there's, like out of this middle group, there's two teams that are really primed to be that one that emerges and jumps into the next tier. Yeah. I think it's Carlton and Fremantle, those two teams. You guys have this weird, sexy little rivalry yeah. going, don't you? Honestly, I dislike them more than I dislike West Coast it's so funny that yeah. because I think Carlton fans will, it's probably because Carlton fans probably disrespect Fremantle a little bit because they seem to knock them off every time whereas Fremantle, yeah. Fremantle fans are like no I think we're better than you but you keep beating us and we want to prove that and there's better. always fuckery when they do beat us so, except there was one <laughs> game where they did convincingly best but every other game it's always like a goal on the sign with a dubious call or mm. Matt Tabner putting it deliberately out of bounds when he should have just bombed it forward yeah losing your home game last year to play them at the G even though you chose to play it at the G and then yeah. losing that is also a bummer yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Um, but let's yeah. talk about Carlton specifically. What is it about them that you think they might improve this well, year? Well, the trend, like, they've brought in some more good talent. Like, Chera's good talent. Like, mm. hates me, pains me to say it, but he's a good player. Mm. Hewitt's another good sort of guy. Like, Patrick Cripp seems to have gotten over his injury sort of woes the last few weeks. I really hope that's not a false dawn. He was fantastic yeah. in that preseason game. Yeah. It's, it's about time he comes back. Bloody oath. But probably similar again to that Ollie Wine sort of comparison. That guy that sort of had Is a rough year's injury, yeah. Mm. And then comes back with a vengeance after a rough few years. Big bullish sort of player that needs to be fully up and about to be as bullish as they'd like to be. Walsh is going to miss a bit of the season. That hurts. I think it's only the May, maybe the first month. Yeah. If that, maybe it's less. Yeah, it's four weeks or so, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Syndesmosis yeah. is uh, a brutal... But injury. I like Matthew Kennedy as well. He's, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a very good player. Uh, definitely a worthy shout for yeah. when you're talking about breakout players this year. I think he, he kind of yeah. broke out a little bit last year, but it's if he does it for 20 rounds, 22 yeah. rounds. And they probably rounds. have the best spine out of like these teams with potential. They've got like a very good spine. Weedering, Mackay... Charlie mm-hmm. Kerno, who's back. Yep. Mitch McGovern, I think, is going to try and play a bit of key back, third tall type Ooh. back for them this year. <laughs> so he might not be a complete potato this year. No, I agree. I, like, Mackay won the Coleman from 19 games last year. Sammy Walsh, if you include the centre in the spine, which you probably yeah. would, um, then he goes into that. So we're talking about one Rock's of the best... a little questionable, but... Yeah, Pitney, yeah. I think, yeah. is their main man. But Walsh is one of the best young mids yep. in the game. Weedering's arguably the best young and key Kibak. defender in the game. Him and or Harris Andrews, if you still count Harris Andrews as young. Uh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Um, they'd probably be one and two in that yeah. uh, under-25 team. Um, and Mackay's are, are definitely one of the best young key forwards yeah. in the game if he's one of Coleman, and it feels like we didn't really see it coming. Yeah. Um, so I agree. Like That top core talent that Carlton have, it feels like they've got the pieces of a premiership. Sometimes you look yeah. at a list and you're like... Who are their best players? Not that it's really always the best way of looking at it, but with Carlton, you can see what the the premiership poster will look yeah. like, like one day. So 
it's just a case of filling in the blanks around them. I think adding Hewitt and Chera was a really right. good move to get, you know, just to pad out that They're two different bit. types of players as well. Definitely. Yeah, Hewitt's kind of a bit more of a defensive style, style player. Chera's yeah. um, a silk. obviously a silky ball user. Um, Which cr- complements Cripps well. That's right. And then Walsh, uh, really good on the outside is, and, and in the inside as well. So, uh, And then I, I think there's upside in, in their flankers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I think Doherty's going to be playing. Yep, I sounds believe. like it. He and had yeah. 38 touches in a yeah. preseason so, game. Yeah, probably round one ready. Yeah, I'd hope so. Uh, and I, I just really rate Sard and Williams as yeah. well. So it's just a case Especially of now them. that they've resigned them to going back rather than they've given up on the Williams midfield experiment, which didn't seem to work. So is, have they come out and said that? Is I think it, they have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so if Williams plays back in a more natural role and, and Sard, as well, yeah. uh, they've got some run and carry as well. They pro- yeah. uh, like maybe they need someone like a Plowman and Marchbank to really lift. But mm. like overall, that's a top eight team. Yeah. I agree. Like, like I, on paper for sure. Like uh, Jack Martin's another handy sort yeah. of flanker, yeah. bit of a forward presence. A lot of upside. So uh, yeah, a new coach Michael Voss. That that yep. could be a hindrance as be, much as a help. yeah. That could go either way, but he might be the hard ass that they've sort of needed to go pull your fingers out. Mm. He's pretty highly regarded. So yeah. I, I did actually have Carlton ninth, but I I look at that team and I think this team should play finals. The only reason I had them tamps because I had GWS at ninth, who I sort of rate higher list wise. Yeah, let's talk about Fremantle now. We this yep. is a team you grouped with with Carlton. Um, what is the level of optimism for this year and playing finals? I think we're a good chance to play finals. I've I'll preface this comment where I've sort of said if everything goes right, like injury wise, and no like. Freo being Freo and just losing a game that they shouldn't lose, that sort of shit. If they completely get rid of that and we have an incredibly healthy run, I think top four is our peak, but realistically there'll be games where we are Fremantle and fuck it up on that somehow. <laughs> Someone probably will get injured at some stage. So it's realistically, I think that probably 7-8 or just missing finals range is where we're sort of going to sit. Probably that 7-11, to 11, I think, is our sort of area. What what are the biggest obstacles to Fremantle? So I, I think I agree it's injuries. I don't I don't think people ever realise how much you guys have been decimated over the last few years, we especially our backline. If we, yeah. we're able to get continuity in our backline, there's an argument that we have the best backline in the league. You've got amongst the the, the mature players like Pierce and Hamling, we're always the ones injured, and you're like, yeah. oh god, one of these guys going to get in? We can show our, our best form. You've had these other guys come up now. And we're almost mad. At, it doesn't matter if those guys miss now. Yeah, like there's I'm, competition for spots, which is very good. I'm We've talking, actually had that. I'm talking about Griffin Logue um, yep. has done really well. Hayden Young is really potentially elite talent. Yep. Um, and then Heath Chapman yep. was outstanding in the preseason game. So there's depth now. Yeah. And you guys are relatively healthy right now. Mm. Yeah, we've got a lot of competition for spots. Because like, we've got even Brendan Cox is fully yep. committed to being a back. Yeah. Luke Ryan's still our... Like, defensive leader like our all Australian backman that sort of the general that rallies the troops that can defend tall and small Griffin Logue's got that ability to play tall and small so you could play even all four of those you could play like a Pierce Hamling Logue yep uh, yeah something like that the midfield took a hit with Chera leaving yep Brayshaw and Sarong could sort of improve to cover that um, is there anyone else in the midfield group that you think might step up uh, I think like, I think one of the kids will sort of probably bob up probably maybe a bit later in the year like an Erasmus or a Johnson. I think they can offer something, not necessarily obviously not to the level of Chera. Darcy Tucker, someone on the uh, on a wing who will be very good for us on the wing. Liam Henry's been playing as a wing. He's a real X factor, point of difference type of player. I think Johnson will need some time to be honest. He doesn't look like a player who will do well early, but Erasmus to yeah. me does. Erasmus has the traits to match AFL players. Like, mm. first day of preseason, he came in and was matching Brayshaw on sprinting drills with, like, agility and shit. I think so the that other. Me a lot of optimism. The other thing against Fremantle where you can't put them higher is the lack of goals. Mm. You, you still rely on Tabiner. Like, you haven't fixed that problem yet. I think our sp- medium small forwards around him have yeah. gotten better, though. I agree. And plus, with Tracy, even, like, I'm not big on Lob, but I think he's still sort of important just to spell Darcy in the ruck. Is he not injured now? Lob. Yeah. I'm not he, sure. Uh, he, well, I think it was Nathan Wilson, actually, that got yeah, Wilson's more injured. seriously injured. Lob got injured in the game, but he might be all right. I don't, there hasn't been talk of Lob missing. Okay. But okay. Uh, Wilson's 
Ben Torp just missing some games. I love Schultz and Switkowski. Yep. Uh, I think they add a great dynamic forward and, and improve your team massively. It, but Michael they Frederick They don't as well. kick a lot of goals. Frederick's a really decent player, actually. Yeah, yeah he's um, he's bobbed up and he's quite con- like reliable. Yeah. yeah. Whenever he takes a mark, I'm like, he's going to kick this. Yeah. yeah he's, so I, I agree, he's been good. And he's player. someone we've never had in our forward line, really. Like, he was sort of... Yeah. The few opportunities he's had, had to play when he's healthy, he's yeah. sort of been thrown around the place a bit. I just think you still need to find some goals from somewhere. Um, whether yeah. Walters goes back like, and has a great season, I don't know. But like, cause here's a sort of a comparison I sort of felt kind of works with Frio. I feel like we could sort of grow kind of like a Melbourne did because like Melbourne had that really great back line that's mm. just like rock solid, holds it down for them. We have that as well. Their midfield is obviously a lot better than ours, but we have that upside. Mm-hmm. We got like Darcy who can sort of be the best ruck in the league. Like Gorn Didn't has even been. mention Darcy. That's a good point. Yeah, we got yeah. Brayshaw, Sarong, Erasmus has upside, but it'll take him years to get there. Obviously, mm-hmm. like and Fife and Mundy. Yeah, Fife and Mundy is still there. Even though Mundy will probably sail into the sunset next couple, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I think you you'd need someone. To, you need to unearth like a fridge, like a um, yeah. Uh, who you got like Sam Sturt? Yeah, um, Sturt's a contender to play Frederick. that role. But, Those two, yeah. But that's the question mark for me on Fremantle. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Finals looking fairly likely. Let's, I had to say eight just making. Yeah. Where, or I'll say fairly likely. I, that's probably a bit strong. It's mm. very hard to pick. Especially <laughs> The other fact of it plays into our favour as well is if it's a more normal year with, in terms of home and away, if we can start to turn Optus into a bit of a fortress for ourselves, that would be invaluable. Because mm-hmm. that's something that's always helped the Eagles when their teams are thereabouts is very having... True. Subi slash Optus is a fortress. I agree with that. We went different on one slash two teams. In we kind of flipped a bit. We, yeah, we flipped them. Um, let's talk about GWS maybe. Yeah. And uh, this is the team that I had higher and you had lower. So you yep. think they'll miss finals? Yep, um, I had them just missing. So let, let's talk through that. I think there's still some question marks. Like you said with Freo, avenues to go like their most reliable source at the moment besides Toby Green when he comes back seems to be Jesse Hogan at the moment mm-hmm. which is there's going to be question marks even though I think he's in a good position to succeed in GWS and looks like he will they've still got a lot of top end talent but they're still sort of figuring out had a rough few years their confidence is probably down a little bit mm-hmm. I'm just going to try and find my notes on GWS uh, oh good they didn't oh they did save fantastic <laughs> um, I just think this is a team that has so much A grade talent that it would be a massive underachievement to miss finals. That being said, they missed finals 2020 and they admittedly won a final last year, but could argue that they didn't look like they were convincing finalists for most of the year. It was year. against a young team for having their sort of first finals campaign together in Sydney who yeah. had a good regular season, but it's still their first like finals campaign as a collective. That's right. I mean, I, I think by the end of the year, the Giants deservingly were yeah. in finals. And obviously, when they win one, that's validated as well. So I don't want to take that against them. But I, I think they've underachieved. And I, I, I keep backing in the teams that I think should be better, yeah. <laughs> but have faltered in the last few years. But uh, the midfield of Taranto, Josh Kelly, Hopper, Tom Green, Callum Ward, um, and then the, I think another question mark is Cornelio. And it just, he's one that could really. Pick send, back it, up. send it either way. Like if he picks mm. back up, yeah. that's a that's a very formidable midfield. And then Lockie Whitfield, in my opinion, can be one of the best players in yep. the comp on oh, his yeah. day. Excuse me. Um, and then just you know some really good flankers around the place. Yeah. I think Lockie Ash is a player. Yep. That I like Lockie Ash. I, I took him quite high in that fantasy draft. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's be a good fantasy yep. option as well. But um, very, the skill set that could. Yep immediately improve them in, in a sense yeah. as well. Even Cumming and Perryman, they're both very yeah. solid players. Unlucky Perryman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Sam Taylor, yeah. one of the best young um, key, backs. key backs in the, in the league. I've, I've talked about Weedering and Andrews. He's not quite yeah. on that level, but he's not far behind. Mm. He's a bit younger as well. I think he's younger than those boys. Yeah. So, uh, But in terms of, yeah, the next wave yeah. after that, I, I would love to have Sam Taylor on my list. So Ooh, yeah. I think it's a best 22. Sorry, I think it's a finalist best 22 yeah definitely but injuries seem to cruel them a bit yep. they seem to be one of those teams that attract it and right. early five weeks without Toby Green and you'll inevitably probably get another suspension once he comes back at some stage so that's right so I have them playing finals you didn't let's talk about the inverse Richmond you have playing finals yep. I can probably imagine what the reasons for Richmond playing finals yeah. are but let's talk through them anyway so I had them at sixth actually yeah I don't know, I just sort of thought they've had that rough sort of couple of years, but they've still got a lot of the core of that team that's dominated the league the last few years. Mm-hmm. 
they'll be able to turn it back around. A more normal structure and routine will mm-hmm. probably help them with that as well. Although that doesn't seem to be a problem for them in the past. <laughs> yeah, certainly not, but it does help those sort of teams that are well-conditioned and programmed. Of course. To yep. sort of have that consistency. It's uh, worth stating that their injuries ruined their season last yep. year. So when Dusty did his did his kidney, kidney <laughs> yep. um, and then someone like Noah Bolter as well, uh, amongst others who miss football, um, that that is worth considering because they are they are a system based team, but you can there are still key players in that team, and obviously Dustin yeah. Martin's arguably the best player in the comp. Still depends on what you're on his day is. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, they've had a couple of retirements, which I think are fairly big. Bashar Hawley, yep. in particular, is very hard General to replace. General of the back line, yeah. yeah, absolutely, an absolute gun halfback flanker. One of the better ones over the last yeah. five years, definitely. I've, I th- there's one person I think can replace that role, though. I'll bring them up because I believe we've got a segment coming up later. First time all Australians, I'll mention him then. No, go on. Oh, let's do right. it. Jaden Short then. Jaden Short. Yeah, he's yeah. already a really good player, yeah. though. So, um, yeah, he's already pretty much an elite yeah. footballer. Um, but yeah, fair enough. Uh, Robbie Tarrant comes in to replace Asprey, so they, they've seen yeah. a need there. Uh, lost Chol. I, I think it's their midfield for me that's the weakness. Yeah. And I think it's mostly, not in terms of the starting midfield, so Dusty, maybe you consider him a forward, but Cochin Could be his towards, down year. Yeah. Presti is great. Yeah. Edwards is fantastic still. Shy Bolton as well. Yep. But if you cop injuries to that midfield... Yeah, their depth's a bit... That's where it falls away from Richmond for yeah. me. So that's why I found it hard to back them. To yeah. Honest. Um, so that's why I had them missing. Uh, but I, I could see a, a real Jekyll and Hyde season from yeah. them. I could see them. I could see them having some howlers. They could knock off Melbourne by forty yeah. points and then lose to North the next week. Yeah. I, I feel like yep. that's the sort of season I see coming. But I, I wouldn't argue too hard against them playing finals yeah. because it's an even group. And obviously Richmond's best is as good as anyone's. Yeah, exactly. Is it as good as Melbourne's? Oh yeah, I did have that immediately coming to mind. Good question, like, eh? I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. To yeah. Confidently say it would. It's hard to. I mean, it's probably a vid- uh, question for another video. But Melbourne last year. Oof, yeah. Anyway, um, cool. So we're probably ready to start cracking into our finalists, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So we well, did, I've half already. Yeah. Had, I've mentioned. So we've talked yeah. about Freeman. I had them in my eight as well. You yeah. had them eighth. Yep. So that means we're down to our seven. We've also talked about Richmond and GWS. Yep. So GWS made it for yep. me, and Richmond made it for you. Yep. Um, another team around that mark's probably the Swans. Yep, I had Sydney at seventh. They yeah, were my seventh. two in that middle group that made the finals was Freo and Sydney. I had them at eighth, I think. So yeah. it seems like we see them similarly. What do you make of them? I think they had a great year last year. Probably a little similar to the argument I made for Essendon. There's that potential for that to stagnate for them. Yep. But they've still got a good group. They comfortably made the finals last year. Mm-hmm. I think they can perform as well as they did last year mm-hmm. and still hold it down. Probably one of the most exciting young lists, yep. both both in terms of actual talent and play style. And play style. That yeah, play was, style is beautiful. That was one of it. the things that I'll remember about Sydney last year yep. was that they were. Um, that, that was a talk of on the couch. I used to watch that show a lot. But um, even our early the, season podcasts, I remember mm. mentioning it a few times. Gone this play style from Sydney's great game to watch every week. Like. So they, they knocked off Richmond was the game I think everyone really stood up and took notice of them. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, Richmond got nowhere near real finals, so uh, in hindsight, no. But I think at that stage of the season, it was still it was still very yeah. impressive. Who else did they beat? They nearly beat Geelong, I remember that. They didn't beat Melbourne, uh, but they did beat the Dogs later in the year. Yep. Uh, but they had some early wins, I'm trying to think. Mm. The, oh, Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane round one. I think actually... By round one, we already knew this Sydney team had something about them. Yeah. Um, it was uh, Errol Golden was running wild. Um, Chaddy Warner. Logan McDonald had bobbed up. Uh, did Braden Campbell... Oh, it was Chaddy Warner, I think. Yeah. That's actually what I'm thinking. Yeah. But a lot of really good young high picks as well. Yeah. Callum Mills was probably one of the biggest wins from that year for them. Yeah. I think he's bobbed up and potentially an All-Australian player yep. this year. Um, Isaac Heaney seems to be in the yeah. media at the moment a he's lot. He's just signed an extension. Heaney's a huge one. He just can't stay fit. Yeah. But on his day, how good do you think Isaac Heaney can be? He's in this conversation with like a Petraka in terms of ability to impact a game as like forward and mid. Except I, he's more aerial than a Petraka. I think he's a bit more so. forward than Petraka. Like I feel like he's yeah. maybe more Toby Green. For me, I agree in some, somewhat, but I yeah. think Petraka's taken it to a level that Heaney can't take it to now. Yeah. Like Heaney, I can't see Heaney having 39-2 and two in, a, in a grand final. But that's not. Oh, cool. I'm not knocking off Heaney. Yeah. I'm, sorry, knocking yeah, Heaney. I'm yeah. saying Petrarca's elevated to 
Yeah. Well, I think I, yeah, I think I had him as the best player in the comp, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm not quite there with Petrak. I know how good he is, but yeah, I'm not as high on him as others are, Fair like enough. yourself and Mark Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I was just we won't make this about Petrak, but I think um, yeah. I weight heavily the performances in big games, and mm. he kind of put the team on his back. But anyway. Heaney, I think, could be at least a Toby Green level, and that's a yeah. massive. That's a massive wrap, to be honest. Minus the suspensions, you'd hope so. Yeah, yeah you'd hope if he can. Yeah, for him, it's injuries. Yeah, but, um, but yeah. Anyway, we're sort of just rifting off, uh, riffing all the good things about Sydney. Yeah. What might be a reason why they don't bop into the top four? Like, if some people are suggesting that they they think they will make the top four. Like you, those sort of guys that got them some good wins last year, are probably going to stagnate. Like your Errol Goldens, your Chatty Warners, your Brayton Campbells, those sort of guys. Yeah. Even though Campbell was okay for them that first year, he sort of could have been a little better. But yeah. it's hard to criticise a first year player. Yeah, I think I think we're using the similar logic to what we were talking about with Essendon. Um, mm, yeah. In that, it's just we need you need upside from other players as well. Yeah. That being said, I think Heaney playing 22 games could be the sort of play that does improve them. Yeah, yeah. Buddy Franklin playing more. Yeah. <laughs> he just needs to play more and that will improve them. Yeah. Because he didn't play make life much. easier for a Logan McDonald as well. That's true. So I, I think Sydney's time is in about three years. Yeah. Maybe two, actually. Yeah, I was going to say two or Maybe even two. next. They're getting the back end of Luke Parker, but also yeah. um, getting the, the new wave of talent that they've got. Yeah. And a little bit of JJK. Or is yeah. it JP? JPK, yeah. JPK. Yeah, I always get the Kennedys mixed up. Do you think we'd feel different if they'd rolled GWS and in the finals? Do probably would. It probably it does probably weigh into our thinking a little bit that they lost a final and then we're like, oh, maybe they're not ready. Maybe it does wrong. inspire, the, would have inspired a bit more confidence, but I think I'd still feel this way about them, even if they did yeah. pants G-dubs. Yeah. I'd be pleasantly surprised if they finished top four. It would be yeah. nice to see them there. Um, the upside's there, but every, like it'd be the peak of what their potential is, I think. Definitely. Uh, so who did you you had Richmond 6 we've covered that who yep. did you have in 5th spot 5th I believe I uh, just got to punch me code in <laughs> NUT5 <laughs> I had Geelong in 5th interesting I had them in 4th uh, yep. let's talk through Geelong what do you make of them do you do you buy into a little bit of the, the talk that they're going to drop off I think it's been wishful thinking it's personally it's kind of funny because you, you usually hear it more strongly that this is the year Geelong goes to shit talk <laughs> but you haven't really heard it this year People seem to very quick to dismiss that they made a prelim final. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, mm. uh, yeah, you can understand it with West Coast and and Richmond, but Geelong were in the thick of it last uh, year and at times look like the best. Look like the best team. If Max Gorn misses that shot after the siren, they're minor premiers. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. That's mm. wishful thinking. I think sometimes we look at a team's list and think there's a lot of thirty year olds in there. They're going to decline. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's more about when they retire, not when they decline. Yeah. I think things could shit, shit could hit the fan when they lose Hawkins, when they lose Joel Selwood, uh, Tom Stewart. I think he's probably got a few more years than that. Danger like, starts losing Danger his athleticism field. and stuff. Yeah, because I don't think they've done the transition well. Yeah. But if we're just talking about this year, Jeremy Cameron and Tom Hawkins in that forward yeah. line, how could you not rate Geelong? Exactly. Like, that's an amazing team. Um, and their midfield talent's still top end still there. Mm. They've bled a bit of that depth, but... Yep, and, yeah. their, and their back line um, with Tom Stewart in particular, Blitzarves and, yeah. and those guys. Uh, they, they, what they're probably looking for is someone like a, a par fit to, to really step up and, and tr- like see yeah. that transition across. Because um, you need that midfielder to emerge to be in the, for that next group towards the end of this yeah. current group. So they've lost a few of those. Like Jordan yeah. Clark, not a midfielder, but a player that you could see in that team for the yeah. next few years. Charlie Constable was a player um, that they talked up and... There were question marks around Constable. For sure, for sure. But I mean, like, those were sort of the contenders. So now that they're gone, um, what's his name? Cooper Stevens was a first round draft pick that they probably want to get some games into. But I don't think he's debuted. If he has, Uh, he hasn't played many games. It could be wrong on that. Um, Zach Guffrey, they like. Yeah, but I mean, he's been around for a while now. Uh, The brothers. Cam, Cam. Cam's the young. Cam's a very good player. Cam's the older one, yeah. Yeah, Zach's the young brother. Yeah, yeah. Cam's a very good player. That's for sure. But Cam Guffrey's probably close to his peak. But yep. I'm talking Zach Guffrey, he had a oh, you, good yeah, preseason okay. game for him. Yeah, the younger one. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, like, okay, so I guess the other argument about Geelong is that they finished this year getting annihilated in a prelim by 83 points. Yeah. I think... Who did they lose to again? Was it Bulldogs? Or? No, they lost to Melbourne. Yeah, that, yeah more explainable. <sighs> they still went that far off the mark. I know they, yeah. they had the sickness, which I be- tend to believe, to be honest. Hmm. I know it sounds like an excuse with Chris Scott saying that I kind of vague, what happened now I vaguely heard something uh, he said that they had a virus um, 
going into that prelim and uh, players were unwell and uh, they got annihilated by 83 points. And in fairness to him, 83 points didn't demonstrate how good Geelong were that yeah. year. So I think, I think there's an argument to be had there. Mm. Um, we're versus West Coast getting annihilated by Collingwood, I don't think we have any excuse over that really. <laughs> I think that was more concerning. Um, and, and any number of other ones like Richmond losing to St Kilda, although they had their injuries. Uh, with Geelong, I'm more happy to write it off and I think they're going to be good again. Yeah, I think they're going to be good. So... Uh, yeah, it sounds like we're on similar lines yeah. with Geelong. Because I sort of had them in that group. Because I had a top group and then I had a top four group. Yeah. So my top four group was yeah, Geelong, Richmond, then Port and Brisbane, who we'll probably talk about next. Let's talk about Port now because I had them fifth. but this I had is, them fourth. I think you yeah. could shuffle around that top five for me, yeah. to be honest. So what do you make of Port Adelaide? Yeah, I, I still like what they've got. They've You can see where the upside's going to come from this year because mm-hmm. like, guys like Butters and Rosie are sort of due for that. Dersma. Yep, Dersma even. Uh, Georgie Artis. Yep. So I think the, un- oh, not unique, but it's unique to Brisbane and Port is that you can see improvement from youth. Yeah. Um, whereas Melbourne, we kind of, it's like, oh my God, is there more improvement? Please no, make yeah. it stop. Um, Geelong, oh God, Luke Jackson's turned into a monster. <laughs> yeah, Geelong, um, Geelong again, it's hard to make a case for youth improving. Yeah. Um, and then there's another team in the top five. Oh, the Bulldogs. Oh, okay, the Bulldogs, okay. you would say, actually yeah. could improve as well. Let's just talk about Port though. Yep. Um, what did you make of them last year? Because there was a bit of a narrative around them uh, not quite being on the level of some of the best teams because they failed to beat them when it counted. That's certainly fair. Is that factored into your thinking? A little, but I think they're still... Like the argument you'd make for Brisbane, they're still a good regular season team. Yeah. Like they've still got the ability to get their 15 to 18 wins or whatever that put them in a yeah top half of the finals. They didn't get upset much over the last two yeah. years, in fact. And they've they've turned Adelaide Oval into a bit of a fortress for them as well. Yeah, they are hard to beat there, although... Um, they are beatable. They, I was going to say the best teams did beat them. So yeah. Melbourne, I think, beat them fairly easily. Um, Geelong beat them once, lost once. The Bulldogs yeah. beat them twice. Yeah, could be wrong on that. I, I it hate sounds it. right off my they, head. They, obviously, they won the prelim, the but I, I can't remember what happened in the main season. But uh, either way, it was patchy at best for for the power. Yeah. Um, but again, we're not predicting who's going to win the flag right now. We're yeah. saying who's going to make it deep in the um, yeah. in the in the actual ladder. So. Yeah. I think the argument for their Port floor is high. That's the yeah. thing with Port. Like it feels similar that way. the floor is very high. It feels that way, and I feel like there's a lot of organic improvement. And I feel yeah. like Travis Boak's not. Maybe you could say he's slowing down because yeah. in 2020 he came second in the Brownlow. So yeah. maybe he's slowing down by yeah. logically speaking. Yeah, with that sort of like Ollie Wines has sort of had his Brownlow year now, and he's sort of helping regain the confidence of having a Brownlow year. So he'll look at this as something he can build upon. So I think. Even that minor improvement at the point of where he's at will sort of mitigate that slight loss of Bo because he gets older and de- less prioritises. They want to give yeah. like your Butters and your Rosies and those sort of dudes crack yeah. in there. Unlike Geelong, you can see... Sam, Sam Powell Pepper even. Yeah, that's true. Like He's a player that I think has a lot of potential. Um, maybe just needs to move home and hmm. find that potential. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you think so. I would take him in a heartbeat because yeah. we, need, we need some players with some upside. But yeah, he'd be we'll perfect make, for you guys. I, I could see him having a great year, actually. Yeah. But um, apparently he's come in with a new degree of diligence and stuff by the sounds. Yeah, at the University of Life. Oh yeah, um, school of hard knocks. <laughs> so put out like, can they win the flag? They can, but <laughs> Bulldogs in Melbourne are a tier above for me for sure. It's hard to see them knocking off someone at the G, but I could see yeah. them certainly getting there. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think there's too much doubt around an MCG grand final this year. Yeah, it's hard happen. to imagine it getting moved. Like, yeah, I, it'll happen. I doubt it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So in the flag conversation, along with Geelong, do we think so? Not I, I, as much as Geelong, even I, though yeah. I had them higher on the ladder, but they're not as much in the conversation. Similar thing as well, because I had Bulldogs in my top tier, but I had Brisbane higher on the ladder. Mm. Uh, I agree with that. Actually, it's funny how yeah. that works because I think I had Geelong higher, but I yeah. feel more. Like a, a Port Adelaide premiership it seems a bit more... Uh, easily comes to my mind a bit more mm. than a Geelong one. Um, Honestly, a Geelong one comes more easier to me than a Port. Yeah, fair enough. Probably because we've seen it more recently. But yeah, and just that forward line of Hawkins and oh, Jess yeah, Cameron. Yeah. Not to be underrated. Though, and probably, Gary Rowan even. It's a very impactful yeah. third, tall, fast, all-rounder. That's true. So we've got our fourth and fifth teams. We're down to the th- three teams. Who do you have third? 
Well, third on the ladder, I had the Bulldogs. Yeah, let's go on the ladder for now. Yep. Yeah, so, right. so you think the last year's grand finals finished uh, third? I think yep. I had them in the same spot. Um, this would be their highest finals finish since yep. 2010. Yep. If they uh, the first time they've made um, the top four since 2010, yep. I think, and they've made, <laughs> played in two grand finals, which is quite yep. funny. And they were outside. They scraped in the four last year in the end. No, they it? missed. They, yeah, they finished fifth. So both grand finals they've made. Yeah, they were outside the four, so which makes it almost feel irrelevant as to where we place them. Exactly, they're sort of that team where it's like that. People sort of write them off for a few games, sort of thing. They feel mm. like they have a few howlers, that sort of thing. But we, their peak is outstanding. I think they're one of the three teams last year that you could say they looked like the best team in the comp at one yeah. point, um, early in the year. Even, and then that, even I think when Melbourne yeah. dropped off, remember they yeah. beat Melbourne mid year. Oh, yeah. um, they admittedly, oh, they beat the Eagles by about eleven goals in Perth, and we thought yeah. the Eagles were half decent then, so that looked like a big deal. Yeah. They did lose to Sydney around that time as well, but they. Now it's just come to me. Port beat the Dogs in the last round to mm. knock them out of the top five. So yeah, they they yeah. did drop off, but at times I thought the Dogs looked yeah. shit hot. Yeah, I, I sort of think they'll be more consistent this year. I think they're sort of at that age point where they've gotten over that sort of like age variance. Mm. They've kind of reached that point where everyone's got that flaw that they can build off rather than having such up and down. Genuine premiership contender then? Yes. Yeah. So how do you think they'll go with Josh Bruce, who kicked a lot of goals? If not, do you think he might have kicked the most goals for them last year? I could be wrong. I think he kicked more think than Norton. I think slightly Norton. more than Norton, yeah. yeah. How do you think they'll go about replacing him? I think, like, because Sam Darcy's injured initially, but they've still got Jamara, Eugle, Hagen there. Seems like Norton's the, probably improved his goal kicking a bit. Seems like the best injury uh, sounds, um, what's the word, controversial, but I think Bruce getting injured is probably the best avenue for Eugle Hagen into the team rather yeah. than a Norton, because I feel like those two could play alongside each other a lot yeah. easier. Well, like, Norton's still going to be in there because it was Norton and the, Bruce. Yeah, the yeah, that's what I mean. So, like, Eugle yeah. Hagen alongside Norton, I think, will make it easier for Eugle Hagen. Yeah, because you know I mean? Norton's like that guy that crashes packs and shit, even if his goal kicking's a bit if he does all that other big powerhouse stuff that Eugle Hagen probably doesn't have the frame for. That's right. And Eugle Hagen's probably a bit more of a buddy style forward than a crash and bash, big yep. key. So, I mean, not many teams are in the, uh, in the position where they could lose a key player part of their forward line and say, oh, we've got this number one draft pick we can just we've put into two, the team. Pretty much. Yeah, we can. We can just chuck yeah. it in. Um, Tim English might emerge a bit more as a forward. They um, need to sort out their... Uh, they really need him to come on as a ruckman, yeah, I think. They do. <laughs> they do. But um, it, he's a very yeah. young ruckman as well. Mm. Like, he gets a fair bit of negative attention for a guy that young, and it's just because he's in a good team, and they don't really... I mean, they've got Stefan Martin, but they haven't got that yeah. sorted. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think long-term, he's still... He has to be all right. Like, rucks do take... Yeah. A long time to develop Like he's still quite And slight. especially because He probably got shafted a bit With like a, such a ready made Ruckman and Sean Darcy Being the second ruck taken In that draft class After him Because mm. English was the first Ruck taken Then we took Darcy Because we, pro- we would have Taken English if he fell to us I think Yeah Yeah Probably yeah. Um, Although you took Griffin Lowe Didn't you That year Yeah Yeah but, but I thought we had a later pick That English year maybe It doesn't, doesn't yeah. really matter Yeah um, Yeah but with the Bulldogs They bat so deep Um the defence would probably need a good key back still, yeah. uh, but they did recruit Tim O'Brien, so a bit of depth mm. there, but obviously not not star power as such. Yeah. Um, but their midfield is still the talking Impeccable. point there with um, Dunkley and Trelaw um, backing up Bont, McRae. Um, Bailey Smith. Bailey Smith. Tom so, Libertore. Yeah, Tom Libertore is probably one of the... I should have mentioned his name earlier. So, yeah, again, how can you argue against the Dogs? They're, again, one of those teams that are virtually at the top. And still have incredible youth yeah. because of some of its luck, some of its father son, um, yeah. some of its uh, academy. But um, yeah, they're in a very good spot. They could contend for a while because Bond's yeah. only just starting to hit its peak yeah. now. So um, cool. So we have them. I presume we have the same top two. So yeah. did you have Brisbane first or second? Second. Second. So did I. So uh, yeah, I think. So l- let's talk about Brisbane. Uh, is this their year? So the argument I've sort of made with them over the last few years is... Oh, you had me a bit late. Sorry, I was looking at the camera just to make sure. Yeah. But yeah. sort of the argument I've made about them the past few years is they've sort of set themselves up for sustained assaults at finals. Like They've built a team that's going to consistently get them to the top four and they've got the upside for them to keep themselves there each year. So they need to be in that position to win a grand final. So mm. is this the year... 
it's tough to say Melbourne look pretty bloody good, but yeah, they've put themselves in a position to win the flag every year, and it might be the year it all clicks. Again, for them, uh, similar to the Dogs, they've lost a important part of their forward line with Eric Hipwood yep. doing an ACL. So uh, they do have Danaher and McStay, but they'll probably just need to figure out a new forward line dynamic without Hipwood. He's kind of a unique player, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. That Charlie plays. Cameron coming off his best year, though. 50-something yeah. goals. Yeah. Zach Bailey, I think, will be another avenue to goal for them this year. So, again, like we, we talked about it with Port. We talked about four players we thought could really elevate, elevate them. Um, Zach Bailey, I think, could go elevate again. Yep. And if he does, then he's almost on that Toby Green level. Um, a couple other players I really, really like. So you got, um, okay, the obvious are Cam Rayner. Um, yep. I think Jared Berry has a lot to offer. Yeah, well, he's think, got that crash and bashy, yep. do the dirty work type of mid-game. Yeah, he's had his, his bright start. He's had his stagnation. Yep. This could be the, the time. I'm a huge fan of Stasevich. Yep. Um, I think he could... Uh, elevate and play an important role um, as a general the, defender still or more yeah, probably like, I think he's just yeah. a really good role player yeah. and all premiership teams are comprised of those mm-hmm. kinds of players um, talked about okay. Bailey um, the other one uh, someone like a Devin Robertson yep. as like a defensive player mention him. Every, every good premiership team has a, a defensive style player there so um, and yeah, McCulloch so even though he's something. sort of he's probably saying most of his but he's still a guy that I think he's still got yeah. plenty more I had there. him up for a first All-Australian in that segment as well yeah so Again, yeah, so blessed with yeah. young talent. It's like it's almost like they, you know, yeah. remember we said in 2019, it's a bit of an artificial rise. Yeah. They even drafted pretty well this year, I think. Yeah, so they took um, Darcy Wilmot, yeah. uh, Kyle Lohman, and some others that escaped me yeah. right now. But yeah, I think you're right. But again, it's um, it's I think they they've been blessed with the injuries in terms of not having too many yeah. over the last couple of years. I think maybe last year they did. Yeah. I know Lockie Neal. Uh, miss the start of the preseason or something like that. So the question a little as well is because how much were they helped by the COVID circumstances and having hubs in Queensland and yeah, I think too relatively normal compared to other teams' the situation. I agree. The top f- they've made top three, four, sorry, yeah. three years in a row now. Yeah. So I think they've kind of earned it now. Yeah, I think, I think they've, they've, they've definitely earned it, but yeah. there's still a degree of that question a little bit. But they have earned. I get it. Everything yeah. they've taken i think i get what you're saying i think the biggest threat to them is knocking off a victorian team at the g like yeah. we unfortunately it's just something we have to consider when we're considering interstate premiers like yeah. i feel like you do need to be a slightly better like they need to be yeah. better than melbourne this year to beat them at the g yeah, yeah. um so there's that but yeah. we'll talk about the d's now the reigning premiers um yeah. how confident are you they're going to go back to back you've picked them first i'm fairly confident like yeah. it's theirs to lose few things that have to go wrong and a few things that have to go right for most teams to bait them, I think. I think I highlighted the question around them is uh, not talent by any stretch because they have <laughs> some of the best football. Yeah. It's one of the strongest football teams on paper I've seen. Yeah, and they've still got that upside in that list as well. Yeah, there's is, a lot of youth and stuff like yeah. that. Um, so, okay, what are the threats against them? Hunger? Mm, yeah. Hunger to go back again. We saw in 2018... Um, after a very successful year they fell off hard that was probably injuries largely lot, yeah. due to injuries as well um, so maybe we're reading too much into that but I think with any premiership side hunger has got to be questioned yeah. a little bit I think it's always something to consider um, what else lack of key forward I don't think that really matters when you win a grand final yeah, and kicking and 140 points McDonald and Tom uh, Ben Brown are serviceable yeah well yeah they're, they're, like, they're not scrubs they're, no they're not and then your Bailey Fritches your Neil Bullens they're mm. good medium forward avenues to goal even Cozzy Pickett yep. so their avenues to goal are not sure especially when yeah. you've got midfielders like Clayton Oliver and Petrarca yeah. kicking goals themselves so again uh, it feels like a very shallow criticism um, yeah. They lost their fitness coach, Burgess, who I think was... Yeah. He's highly, very highly regarded. Yeah. One of the best fitness coaches in the world, regardless of sporting league and that yeah. sort of shit. And that was a hallmark of the way they played last yeah. year, this fitness. So it, it's probably not going to make them unfit. Yeah, that was, they haven't unlearned everything he taught them. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, it's just things to consider. Yeah. Um, and I guess one thing is just they're going to be the hunted team now. Yeah. How do we stop Melbourne? Yeah, uh, I think it's very hard. Like, how do you stop a Petrarca and Oliver who are contested beasts? Especially when Gorn's getting them first charge. Yeah, didn't even mention Max Gorn there. So, but even like the, the way they talk about that grand final, it sort of felt like once they took Gorn out of the ruck, they became less predictable. They mm. is the way the Melbourne talk about how they swung in that game in that third quarter. It does help because most teams sort of game plan around. Yeah, Gorn's going to beat our guy. Let's 
yeah. just be defensive in the midfield. And Whereas they, when they chuck Jackson in, maybe the Bulldogs felt, yeah, we might be able to get first ball here. But then, yeah, Olivers, Petrakas, Yovani's mm. were still too good. And we haven't even mentioned their back line yet, which was the best in the league last year. Yeah. And um, Lever and May. Uh, Christian Salem. Salem. Uh, yeah, just the in defensive setup as well. Yeah. And uh, strategically, th- that with probably the way teams try and look at, uh, to break Melbourne down is their defensive setup. Yeah. Um, but whether they can do it is a completely different question. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, like I'm sure teams planned for Richmond over the last four years too. <laughs> yeah. And um, they nearly won four in a row. So, um, yeah. All right. So yeah. we talked about our teams, uh, our 18 yep. teams in order. We're very similar on, on rankings, a few devi- yeah. uh, deviations. But what's the grand final going to be? Give me a venue. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Melbourne and Geelong. I like it. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, that'll be the final chapter in their rivalry they've sort of had the last few years it's escaping me who I put in my grand final in the video I don't want to I think it was Melbourne and Brisbane to be honest yeah I think you had Brisbane I think it was Brisbane uh, so yeah I'll back them to, to go a bit bit deeper um, this year also the finals yeah well if they finish second then they get two home finals yeah. and surely not again yeah <laughs> So and but I think on this quality I, I think I've justified it. Like I, mm. I rate them really highly. I could see Port in there, yeah. um, and certainly the Bulldogs. Certainly the Bulldogs. Yeah. So I had them third, and yeah, yeah. It could it could easily be Melbourne and the Bulldogs again. Realistically, but I was but, just trying to be a bit spicy. No, so, yeah, and out of the spice, I felt John was the likely to spice ratio that I wanted to go with. Likely to spice ratio. I good. Uh, it's good. <laughs> um, all right. What else we got? So Brownlow. I said in my video. I think I put Jack Steele and. Was it Clayton Oliver? I've already forgotten. I think he did say Oliver. Who, who, let's talk some other contenders, though. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna say, it pains me to say it, but Patrick Cripps. Yeah? Even though I like Patrick Cripps personally, it's just I don't like his team. Yeah, okay. But yeah. I think Patrick Cripps, like I sort of said earlier, I think he could do the Wines thing where now he's sort of had a rough few years where he sort of had to sit and think about his game and stuff. Now he's healthy again, had a full preseason. I think he can really attack and accumulate like Wines did last year. If you think about... Crips in his form like, and especially no Walsh there for the first month or so so that's one less person pinching free votes off him every week yeah that's right if you think about Crips in his best form he polled exceptionally well in a team that won like two games yeah he nearly so won it in a team if, won if, if Carlton win 12 games next year yeah. and and Crips is at his best then it seems to lose yeah I was going to say it seems that way Bontempelli yep. a massive chance uh, Petrarca probably not as consistently dominant I don't really want I don't really want to pick a demon's path there are like too many people still too many votes over there like yeah, Clayton Oliver got very close though, yeah. last year so but I uh, very fair logic very fair logic uh, Rising Star Rising Star I'm gonna I'll slightly go towards Dark Horse over Horn Francis just because of the, the limited preseason yeah. evidence rather than any actual sort of conviction I feel like Dacos will consistently win the ball when his team loses, whereas Horn yeah. Francis, who may... Will impact winning. I kind of probably actually think I'd rather have Horn Francis, yeah. but will he do enough in the off games? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is with the Horn Francis, he's a bit of that Petraka type sort of guy mm. that impacts winning and stuff, but like when he's off, he, he can look a bit lost. Yeah, it depends how they pick it. Yeah. I think if they, um, if they look past consistency and they go for what is this top talent talent, Relatively, is it relatively yeah. consistent? If yes, they may go Horn Francis. Yeah. Uh, Ugle Hagen's the shout. Yeah, especially with Bruce Bain out. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Rao is still eligible. Is he? At least some. It used to be like it used to be first three seasons, I believe, uh, and under ten games going into that year, I believe he still qualifies. So unless they've changed. Oh, it. So if he's eligible, it's probably his to lose. Bad shout. But then I remember when Shuey was like a very late ager, and I, because I'm an yeah. Eve fan, I believe that they. They considered heavily that Shuey was 21 and Heppel was 19. Yeah. I, I reckon. And they may do that again with Rao. Yeah. Who knows? But, um, yeah, that's just me working some Eagles bias into it. <laughs> uh, Coleman Medal? Ooh. I'm going to go with... Joe Danaher. Far out. That is left field. Oh, yeah. That is a spice to likelihood ratio. Because he's had another year of health now. Pipwood's gone. They're probably going to have to park him in the square as their primary tall avenue to go. Yeah. I don't mind it, actually. The more I think about it, it's a good. It's a very good left field one. Yeah. I You'll think, get plenty of service. I think Jeremy Cameron. 
He was my other one yeah. I was sort of weighing up. The argument against is Tom Hawkins being in the same mm. team, but I think Jeremy Cameron is good enough to win it yeah. anyway. And I think Geelong will be good this year. Um, let's call out a few uh, roughy All-Australians, okay? I know that you did a little bit of research for this. So right. this can be either first-time All-Australians um, or just surprise ones or, um, you know, just general yeah. roughies. So why don't you rattle off? A so I sort of went first-time more specifically this one. I had a few backs. I had Jaden Short, who we mentioned earlier. Jack Sinclair, I think, is another potential All-Australian back if St. Kilda have the good year that they should. Maybe it will have, yeah. Uh, Champion Daddy agrees with you on that yep. one. Jordan Ridley, I think, is another one. I like that one. can go up a level. He's got a bit of spice to him. And yeah. Christian Salem. I I, I wasn't going to put him because I thought he made it last year, but mm. he didn't. I looked and he didn't actually make it last year. Mm. He was like one of the big snubs, I think, though, yep. last year. Yeah. In terms of mids, I got Callum Mills. I don't think he No, I don't think one. he has either. If he would have, it would have been last year. I don't yeah. think he did. Andy Brayshaw, if Freo have a big year. And he's I can on see that. Yeah. Hugh consistent. McCluggage. Yeah, that feels like a matter of time. Yep. In terms of forwards, I've got Shy Bolton. Yep. Because it did still sort of count him as a forward, I think. He could be an yep. Australian forward. Zach Bailey as well. I think he sort of half counts as a forward as well. Absolutely. And then Sean Darcy yeah, could yeah, emerge as the that. best ruck in the game. I agree with that. I'll rattle off a few. Yeah. Bailey Fritch. Yeah. Um, Didn't he make it? I don't think so. I could be wrong. I think he made it last year. I don't think so. If you want to... I'll Google, but go on. Jamie, if you want to look that up for me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Bailey Fritch. Uh... I think the, the that speaks for himself. Kicks a lot of goals. Jacob Weedering. Yeah, Weedering's a good chair. In fact, I feel pretty confident that he's going to do it. At some stage. Ma- yeah. Maybe not this year, but it will happen in his career. I've gone Zach Butters uh, because I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Tim Taranto. That yeah, Taranto's again is a very good chair. Uber yeah. consistent and starting to enter his prime. Yeah. And this is my Eagles bias call. My one of about five for the day. Tim Kelly. Hmm. He made one. No, you're right, but I'm saying Ruffy. Oh, Ruffy, okay. I'm saying Ruffy because people don't rate him anymore. Yeah. And it's because the Eagles suck. (laughs) But I, um, I, just going on the logic about um, our new game plan set to favour Tim Kelly, apparently, like, he's been killing it. That preseason game was unreal. May have a fairly yeah. open run at it this year in terms of other play, yeah, other midfielders they actually... They need to prioritise him over your other big names, I think, at this point. Yeah. Especially is, the age profile and everything. Is Yo going to play much? Is Shuey going to play much? I hope yes to both of those yeah, things. Even but Gaff. I feel like Tim Kelly will win our best and fairest, and therefore he's going to be close yeah. to the All-Australian. So that's my roughy call. <laughs> yeah, I like it. But yeah. Well, that probably wraps up our pod. It's been fairly long. I think it's going to be like an hour 20. Oh, yeah. Maybe something like that. Um, Pretty much dead on, I think. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, thank you guys for sitting yep. through that. It was a lot of hard work. This is always the yep. most popular podcast every year. I think my most yep. popular is probably about 5,000 views or something. Did we clip this one last year or did we just run it? No, as we a... just ran it. Yeah. yeah, and I think we'll do the same this year. So nice. um, thank you guys for all your support. Make sure you go check out manscaped.com, uh, the sponsor of today's pod. Oh, yeah, and I'll, I'll plug the footy tipping comp, which I'm going to set up by the time this video comes out, and the fantasy comp. is going to I'm going to start putting in the description of each vid. Um Round one in a few days. I'm going to release uh, footy tipping predictions. I still got to do my now. actual fantasy team, non-draft team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do that, do that. Absolutely, everyone get around it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for sticking fat with the channel until uh, over this, you know, horrible <laughs> off season. It's just been hot and miserable, uh, um, but uh, it's going to be back. So thank oh yeah. you, Busher, as well for for having us. So as always, um, always love it. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Cheers. Catches. <laughs>